Good morning, Bulldogs. Let's get right to it today. Hope everyone is doing well, um, well as can be. I'll be asking for more feedback soon when we come back next week. Um, so, top news today. Um, the White House uh, debating face masks. Uh, in other words, they've been suggesting that maybe you should wear them whenever you leave the house. At first, it was just if you're sick. Um, I guess good luck getting face masks, however. Um, half of the people of the world are under the orders that they should be staying at home. Here's um, the spheres that are growing throughout the world. You see some smaller ones are now um, popping up the U.S. cases. Look how much bigger this bubble has gotten than how much redder we've gotten where we are over the past week or two since we've been doing this. Um, the markets are still blah. And then, of course, the photos of social distancing and everything that's going on right now. Um, we mentioned that... Uh, a few days ago, this USS Comfort has come um, to New York. Now they're saying it only has 20 patients. It's not being really used correctly. Hopefully they get that fixed. So it's not just a PR stunt, but something um, helpful. Um, today's job re uh, reports, yesterday the unemployment figures came out and 6.6 uh, .6 million applied for unemployment in the previous week. I know many people in that situation um, unfortunately, probably many of your friends or loved ones are, and hopefully this can be remedied soon. Um, Trump mentioned a deal for oil um, that he thought was going to help at least the oil stocks. Um, so far, there wasn't, haven't really been much of a difference. Um, some people were critical that he called the leader of Saudi Arabia his friend um, after the Jamal Khashoggi killing. We'll see what happens um, with this, uh, if it makes a difference or not. Um, this is something that affects uh, many people. Um, you know, everyone's told to stay at home, but there's also non-essential workers. And they studied cell phone data. It's a little creepy. Um, but they said that the wealthiest people are able to stay at home the most, where in the poorest areas are often the people that need to go to work, to work. Uh, jobs that are still open, whether you're working at a uh, a grocery store or um, a, a gas station, or you know, there's hundreds of jobs that fall in that category. Um, you know, whereas the wealthier people can stay in, in their big homes. So, is this having you know dangerous social economic effects? Um, because then the poor people are more exposed to the virus. Um, Hey, it suggests you should make hippie style broccoli dill pasta. All right, so let's um, go now to the BBC, which I looked had some similar cases um, about the US recommending people to wear masks. Has anyone made their own? Um, let me know. Send me a photo. Maybe we can share um, some um, how our president's view has changed on the virus. So look, just here, we have two U.S. stories, even though it's the BBC. Another one here, U.S. tourist town telling visitors to stay away um, from someone who comes from the Jersey Shore. That that has been a big issue. People not wanting others to come rent out the beach houses um, to escape during this. Um, having babies. This is a little, the live updates. Oh, this is awful. The UK expects their death peak near Easter Sunday. That's that's alarming. Any day is alarming, right? In other words, here to say hi to you. Okay, so no news. Uh, I mentioned two days ago, I'm going to try to find a way to add some good news to this every morning because we need to hear some good news. We can't just hear updates on the coronavirus every day. It's not good for our heads, right? So um, we'll be doing that. All right. Um, so today um, for National Poetry Month, so I guess I have, it's April 3rd, so I can talk to you guys about this yet, unless you see my other videos. Um, it's National Poetry Month and National Poetry Writers Month is the month of April. So um, every day I'm going to be featuring a poet 
um, from that time. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to find ones from the Industrial Revolution era. And I'm going to um, share a piece of their poem and connect it because we like making connections to the coronavirus, which I know is like weird and somewhat creepy, um, but it, it's, it's also powerful and can be meaningful. So today I'm going to share the poet Julius Slowaki. He was Polish. Um, the borders of Poland have changed over time. Um, today, um, they would say he lived in, um, for a time, an area would now be the Ukraine. Um, but he was a Polish poet of the Romantic era. So the Romantic era is another era um, of art. So it followed Rococo. Um, we did the Rococo art where we did that really fun activity. I saw a lot of you guys fo focused on that for your reflection, which was fun to remember. Um, it wasn't a smooth transition. There were other things in between. I, I could, maybe I'll discuss that when we do the Industrial Revolution. Um, he was no, there's like three famous writers, the bards of Poland, they call him. And he's one of those three. He was not very famous, um, while he was alive. Um, he had a lot, he was a member of like the intellectual elite, they would say, but like when he died, there was like, you know, no big funeral, let's say. Um, he also was very politically involved. He wanted, uh, think of the age of revolutions and he wanted to overthrow the kingdom of Poland. Um, and because of some of the, those troubles, he actually was an immigre. He left Poland. He spent a lot of time in France, spent a little time in Switzerland, traveled actually through the Middle East and other areas during this time, but ended up then spending like over the last decade of his life in, um, in France. So he died on this day. He wasn't born on this day in April 3rd, 1849 from tuberculosis. So another connection to, I guess, you know, disease and, and, and health. Um, during the Industrial Revolution, um, with uh, disease spreading so rapidly because of a lack of hygiene and all other issues, a bunch of people living in, in small spaces, many people died of tuberculosis. Um, and unfortunately, he was one of them. So I picked um, a part of a poem. He has this long poem um, and he has a chapters of it. So here's an excerpt I chose. And lo, once at a time at night, the shaman walked in Ellie, sang to him, sleep not, but come with me, for there are mighty matters in the wilderness. Having put on a white garment, therefore, and Ellie followed the old man, and they walked by the light of the stars. And with the white garment, um, not having to do with hazmat suits, but I thought of all these uh, people who are putting their lives on the line um, to help people with this virus and putting on these white um, protection suits and you know here are people you know at, at nighttime um, guiding other people to help them and you know that is not what Julius meant by any means when he wrote this poem but poems are what you make of them we can all interpret them how we interpret them so trying to connect it um, to an image of what's going on in the world today I thought that could be powerful so you're actually going to be doing this um, for a project, which I will um, go over more in detail um, later, not today. I am going to post it later today. And the video on how to do it is already up there. So if you have some time over the weekend and you want to get a head start on this poetry project, I know we have a lot of creative minds in these two classes. Um, feel free to get on board and I'll probably try to check my email a little bit this weekend. Even though I usually try not to on the weekend, just in case you have questions because you do want to start it. Oops. So this is not what I was going to show you. Okay. What I do want to show you is, um, your assignment for today. So today, um, you're doing a woman's history month reflection. So ever since we've been at home, we've been uh, focusing on the videos on various women who were probably born on that day or had some connection to that day in history. And as I told you, told you about their lives, often I would get say like, oh, this is an example of persistence, or this is an example of collaboration. Sometimes I didn't focus on that. I sort of just give the information and you have the ability to make these connections. So what you need to do is to go back over the videos. It might not just be the ones that you've seen, maybe the ones I posted for days one or days three. Um, and 
you know, learn about some of these women and find out, oh, this one is a good example of empathy, or this one's a good example of persistence. So I made an example two days ago. I actually took the time to find female cartoon characters that were born in March. And uh, I, I made three examples. I have Barbie, Marge Simpson, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. So how is Marge Simpson an example of reflection? I tried to be um, specific. I included specific episodes and clips. I didn't mention outline resources here. If you use outline resources, you'd want to use that. So it means like anything besides my video to find information on them. Um, collaboration for Wonder Woman about how she, you know, collaborated with Giganta and Superman and Batman and Barbie. Obviously, she's an example of persistence if she's had over 200 careers in her lifetime, right? So, um, no. She also has a horse. How is having a horse an example of persistence? I don't even know what persistence is. It means like you like keep trying at something to get it right. Does she know how to ride the horse? Yeah. Well, so that probably took persistence, right? Because you definitely can't learn how to ride a horse the first time you try it. She also has a cat and a dog. How is that persistence? I don't know. You don't know either. But you could probably figure it out if you think hard enough. I don't like thinking. Well, okay. So let us do, um, let me show you. So if you fill all that out, that would give you like a three. And if you do well, okay. For those of you who like trying to go to fours, um, you would want to provide a fifth example. So this format gives you one, two, three, four. So then like on the bottom, create a fifth example. Um, of someone not in the videos. So uh, there's plenty of other women in the world. Um, find someone else um, and say they could be any of these four values you want. Um, and, you know, give me um, information as well. And then maybe my goal is that I have a whole bunch of new people to include next year um, when you guys are sophomores and you can come in my room and be like, hey, look, you're sharing my person. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be fun? Think of us in school. And like you walk into my classroom, right? Yeah. Imagine this. So um, um, if you don't want to use this format and you want to make um, a PowerPoint or a video or you want some other way to be creative, you want to make it a poster and show me a picture just because you feel like you need to use crayons because you're sick of your computer. Hey, that's cool. I just want to make sure you're reflected. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, any concerns, let me know. FYI, I am trying to do Google Hangouts today. Um, it's not mandatory. It is not video, just chat, just to address questions. It might work, it might not, but feel free to give it a try. All right, be well, devils. Bulldogs. Be well, bulldogs.